to mute the conference. All participants are muted. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, oh, I feel better, so much better. Since I laid my burdens down, oh, I feel better, so much better. Since I laid my burdens down, oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Well, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Bailey. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. Good morning, Bailey. How are you, my friend? Good morning, Lady Holden. God bless you and Bishop. Good morning, Sister Riley. Good morning, Sister Angela. God bless you, Sister Butler. God bless you and Brother Butler. Praise the Lord. Sister Jackson Perry, God bless you and your family. Good morning, Sister Tanya. Good morning, Ronza. Good morning, Sister Sarah. Good morning, Elder and Sister Adams. God bless you both. Good morning, Missionary Johnson. Good morning, Elder and Mother Bailey. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Clory. God bless you. Good morning, Lady Austin. God bless you and Bishop. Good morning, Doctor and Sister Haywood. God bless you. Good morning, Angela. God bless you, my sister. Good morning. God bless you, Brother Paul. God bless Bless you, Sister Monique. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Pedlaw, Missionary Domingo. God bless you. Good morning, Carly. Good morning, Duchess. God bless you. Good morning, Thomasina. God bless you. Good morning, Bishop Designate Alde. God bless you, my friend. Good morning, Sister Taylor. Good morning, Sister Ronza. Good morning, Sister Walker. Good morning, Brother Harmon. God bless you. Good morning. Sister Jackson. Good morning, Sister Burnett. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Edmund. Good morning, Sister Dykes. Good morning, Sister Gwen. God bless you. Good morning, Yolanda. Good morning, Sister Sandy. Good morning, Mother McCall. God bless you. Good morning, Katrina. Good morning, Elder Mott, good morning, Dr. Hood. God bless you, sir. Good morning, Miriam. Good morning, Sister McLeod. Good morning, Sister Caldwell. Good morning, Sister Dawes. God bless you and Minister Dawes. Good morning, Sister Kathy. Good morning, Mother Wilson. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Sister Jan. Good morning, Kimberly. God bless you and Deacon Clark and the family. Good morning, Mother Nicholson. Good morning, Sister Stacy. Good morning, Jeannie. God bless you. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Evangelist Alvin. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Elaine. Good morning, Brother and Sister Stokes and the Stokes family. Good morning, Sister Dee Dee. Praise the Lord, Sister Kim. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Durham. Good morning, Elder Henderson. God bless you, sir. Good morning, Brother Henderson. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Polk. Good morning, Sister Cheek. Good morning, Tilda. Good morning, Sister Nixon. God bless you. Sister Janice. Good morning, Marlette. Good morning, Sister Boudram. God bless you, Mother Fears. God bless you and Pastor Fears. Good morning, Dion. Good morning, Elder Garrett. Well, praise the Lord and good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you 
with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And I thank God because every day I hear testimonies of God working in the lives of people because people are praying. And even in the difficulties of the moment, God is still holding us together. God is still lifting us. God is still caring for us because we have a relationship with God that has been established by prayer. And so prayer is a necessity. It's not um, a luxury. It's not something only special people do, but everybody, everybody. The Bible says that men ought to always pray and not faint. That means everybody ought to be praying. Everybody ought to be seeking the face of God, the mind of God, and trusting God for what we need the Lord to do in our lives. As always, if you have a prayer request, please place it if you're on Facebook in the chat. Or you can um, inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can place it in the comment section here on the screen. Or you can um, direct message Pastor RJD. And I want to welcome and thank God for our conference call listeners who are here every day listening by conference call. And for them and for those on YouTube and anybody that wants to do this, you can text in your prayer request to 336-567-567. 5358. Again, that number is 336 567 5358. Text your prayer requests. We're adding them to the prayer list, to the prayer book. And more importantly, we're praying for them and for you. And we're praying over them, believing God for what we know the Lord is able to do because God is indeed able. I want to go to the word now because I want to deal with a serious theological topic that um, references the end times. And that's one of the things that in this particular epistle, John deals with. John really recaps a lot of doctrine, a lot of things that we need to know as believers. And this one is extremely important because it relates to the end times that is still in front of us, what is yet still about to come to pass. So let's read from 1 John chapter 2, and I want to read just verses 18 and 19. The Bible says, little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For had they been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. They were not all of us. I want to talk about many antichrists. Many antichrists. You know, um, I think the church has left the teaching of the Antichrist to Hollywood. Um, movies like The Omen and things of that nature that make reference to the coming of the Antichrist. And I don't know if we fully discuss or explore or reference the Antichrist to the point that the saints are aware and that the saints are warning others of the coming of the Antichrist. Um, it is a last days teaching. It is a last days concept that I think you need to know. I need to know. We need to know. So that we are prepared to miss the Antichrist. I'm not planning to be here when the Antichrist is revealed. According to the word, he's going to be revealed after the rapture. But the same way you need to know truth so you can warn those that are unsaved, or you can warn those that perhaps are not serious about their walk, so that we don't fall into um, the danger of being here when the Antichrist is revealed. John begins by saying, little children, it is the last time. 
and 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 he's referring to the last days that we are and 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 if you think about it John wrote this 2000 years ago but yet knew then the urgency of time now some would say well John was wrong they, they weren't the last times but yes it was the last time from the advent of the church until the rapture comes we are indeed in the last days from the time that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, because he said in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. That was the last days. The Pentecost was a last day event. The church operating now is operating in the last days. We are in the last moments of human history as we know it. We're in the last moments of time as we know it. Now, you say, well, Bishop, are you saying tomorrow? I'm saying I don't know when. That's why I know these are the last days, because Jesus said no man knoweth the day nor the hour. So I'm not here to give you a chronological prediction, but I am here to look at the word and to look at time to know that we are in the last days. The Bible says in the last days, perilous times shall come. We're there. We're in those perilous times. The Bible says in the last days, men shall wax worse and worse. We're there. The Bible says in the last days, the love of many shall wax cold. We're there. All the things that I just mentioned are a reality. In the last days, there'll be earthquakes. There'll be wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in divers places. We're there. Everything that Jesus said would happen in the last days is happening right now. We're seeing the revelation of it. And as even as we look at the church, we understand the last days. Why? Because Paul said that they would have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. That they would have the form. And, and, and there's such a religious mindset, not in the sense of faith, but in the sense of practice. People love the church atmosphere. They love the worship, the dance. They love the, the, the prophetic gifts and they love to preach and teach. But in so many cases, the power of deliverance is not there. And so we can look at the world, we can look at nature, we can look at the wars that are plaguing our, 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 our lands, we can look at all of this and know for a fact that we are indeed in the last days. We are there. We also know that we're there because he said, as ye have heard, that the Antichrist shall come. Now, the Antichrist in his totality has not yet been revealed. He might be alive now. He might be a leader on the world stage. He might be somebody that we wouldn't think or recognize. But the spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. Because the Antichrist is that embodiment of Satan, that incarnate of Satan that has come to deceive and to take over the world. And he is coming. Daniel talked about him. And Daniel mentioned it from this perspective that literally they are the, the nations of the earth are going to cede their power to the Antichrist. They're going to give the, the nations of the world are going to give themselves and make a covenant with the Antichrist. He's not going to take the world by force. They're going to give themselves over to the Antichrist. They're going to say, yes, you know better and you are the strongest and you you are the smartest and you are the wisest and they're going to literally see the authority of this planet into the hands of one man. Whereas we have all of these nations that have their own laws and their own leaders and they have their own interests. When the Antichrist comes, the nations of the world are going to cede their authority to the Antichrist. They're going to cede their power to the Antichrist. You're going to see Russia bow. You're going to see China bow. You're going to see Saudi Arabia. You're going to see the nations of Africa. You're going to see the United States. You're going to see all the nations of the world yield themselves to the dominion of the Antichrist, even Israel, because they are looking for the Messiah. 
And because they rejected Jesus Christ as the Messiah, when the Antichrist comes, they're going to assume that he is the Messiah. He's going to be so deceptive. He's going to do so many amazing things in that first three and a half years that they're going to say, this must be the one that we have been looking for. This must be the one we have been waiting for. And they're going to see themselves, mainly because he's going to allow the Jews to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Right now in Jerusalem, the Dome of the Rock, which is an Islamic mosque, sits on Mount Zion. It has sat there for centuries, but somehow the mosque is going to be removed and the temple is going to be rebuilt. And you say, well, how do you know this, Pastor Davis? First of all, it's in the Word. Secondly, do you not know that the Jews have already designed the plans to rebuild the temple? They're already training young boys to be priests so they can resume offering sacrifice and and resume the, the 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 elements of their faith because they want to do it at the they want to do it on the Mount Zion at the temple. The Antichrist is going to allow them to rebuild the temple, and they're going to know for a surety, oh, this is the Messiah. This is the one that God promised would come. But then the Messiah is going to demand worship from Israel. He's going to walk into the temple and he's going to say, "Stop worshiping Jehovah. Stop worshiping Yahweh, and worship me," because. I'm the God that you've been looking for. And that's when they're going to realize this is the Antichrist. But it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. They will, And, and then the Bible says that's when he's going to try to merge all the nations of the world to come and attack Israel. And at that moment when he's trying to annihilate Israel, then Jesus Christ will return. And that is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And saints, this stuff is is going to happen. I know you've heard it. I know you I know you've you, you've heard it preached and taught and some of you forgot what we were taught, but I need you to know that the end times are real. The end times are real. They are real. And every believer should be looking at the calendar and looking at your Bible and saying, Lord, help me to escape the wrath of him that is to come. Help me to escape this. But if you understand what John is saying, that we heard, you heard that the Antichrist shall come. He's not been revealed yet. He wasn't revealed in John's time. Some thought it was Nero, but Nero wasn't the Antichrist because it didn't bring the second coming of Jesus Christ. Christ. This Antichrist is going to usher. The Bible says because they would not believe God, he's going to send them a strong delusion. And this Antichrist is that strong delusion that is coming. But in before the Antichrist shall be revealed, we're already seeing what, what John calls many Antichrists. Many Antichrists. Jesus talked about this when he said many shall rise saying I am the Christ. And he says don't believe them. Don't follow them. You know the true and living Jesus Christ. Don't follow these false Christ. They, they've already arisen. They've already revealed themselves. And but I want you to. Po I want to point out what John says emphatically. They went out from us. They went out from us. And this is the characteristic of the Antichrist. He is a deceiver. The Antichrist is a deceiver, and the only way you can be duped by a deceiver, he has to at least appear to be like the genuine article. So that's why deception is deception, because it looks real, but it's really false. It looks like it's what, uh, hallelujah, you were looking for, but it's a knockoff, it's a fake. And that's the element of the Antichrist. He has to appear. That's why there's so much infiltration in the church of false teaching, false preaching, pretenders, phonies, fakes, because that's the spirit of Katama of the Antichrist. It's the spirit of deception. How can I fool people into believing that I'm something that I'm not? How can I fool people into accepting me as the genuine article when I'm not? I have to be among them. And John says they went out from us. In other words, they rose up right in the middle of the church. And that's why the church has to have discernment. That's why the church can't believe liars. That's why the church can't accept everybody coming in a robe or coming in with, with, with a tongue. Because there are liars. There are deceivers right in the church. And people are being deceived right in the church. Yes, they are. People are being deceived. They come from within. And then they 
they depart from the faithful. They come in the church long enough to build a following. They come in the church long enough to build a, a following, a gathering of people, people that develop confidence in them, people that develop the mindset that they might be, oh, th oh that he's anointed, she's anointed, oh, they've got power, they've got this, they've got that, and then they move away from the church. Why do they move away from the church? Because they don't want the order and the word, and they don't want the living word. There are people that would rather you believe their word than the word of God. There are people there are preachers, prophets, evangelists, all apostles, whatever you want to call them, that would rather you take their word above the word of God. The word of God has to be the final authority. And when you find people deviating from the scripture, adding to the scripture, taking away from the scripture, that is the spirit of the Antichrist. That is the spirit that is already afoot among the church. They're not in the church in the fact that they're not born again. They Grows up the same way the Bible says the wheat and the tear grow together. The tear looks like wheat, but it's not wheat. The tear resembles wheat. The tear intertwines itself with the wheat, but it is not wheat. But it stays among us, and then it pulls away in an effort to draw away disciples unto themselves. That is the spirit of the Antichrist, and there are many. It's not just one. Just as soon as you expose one, another one is revealed. Just as soon as you expose that, another one is revealed because the spirit of the Antichrist is at work in the earth. They come with, they, 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 they turn away from the doctrine. They turn away from the truth. They depart and they lead people out with them. There's always going to be somebody weak enough to follow Follow, follow somebody that is not in the truth. There's always going to be somebody weak enough to follow somebody that is in error. And that's the spirit that is in the world. Because the Antichrist, you, you look at all of these changes in faith. You know, I'm thinking about a very popular preacher. I won't call his name for the sake of, of, of time, but, but, but he was a prominent preacher having worldwide conferences and suddenly accepted this thing called the doctrine of inclusion, that everybody was already saved, whether they accepted Christ or not, whether they received the Holy Spirit or not, they were already saved. You know what? And, and when I saw that, I said, that's the spirit of the Antichrist, because the Antichrist has to have a prophet. If you read in the book of revelations is not just the antichrist but it's the false prophet and it's the beast all of these elements are working in the domination of the world and that false prophet is going to deceive religious minded folk who don't study the word he's going to deceive religious minded folk that don't believe the word because that spirit is already there he says they came out from us if they had continued they would have gotten saved that's why they came out the devil led them out because had they continued in the word, they would have been saved. But they stay long enough to infiltrate the congregation, to infiltrate believers, and then to pull them away in their false doctrine. And saints, that spirit is in the earth now. And so, Pastor Davis, what is my response? Lord, so many are falling by the wayside. Help me to stand. So many are being deceived. Help me to stand. So many are going into false doctrine. Help me to stand. Help me to hold on on to the truth. Help me to bear up in the truth. Help me to be careful not to be fooled, not to be duped. Paul said, if an angel of light coming preaching any other gospel, let him be accursed. Don't fall for it, saints. Don't fall for the deception. Don't fall for the show. Don't fall for the flash. Don't fall for the glitz and the glamour. If it's not the word of God, don't accept it. Don't accept it. Because the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. And we have to be ready. Yes, we do, Javonda. We have to be ready because Jesus Christ is coming back. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My blessed Savior, I love you. I thank you. I adore you. I bless your name for another day. This is indeed the day that you have made, and we rejoice, and we are glad to be a part of this day. You awakened us, God. We're in the next to the last month of the year, and you, has brought, you have brought us through 10 full months, and we're grateful for your grace and your love and your mercy. We're grateful for being alive today. 
And we are so thankful to you. Lord, we just are praying for everybody on this line. That, Lord, we would not be deceived. God, I'm praying for everybody that is watching and listening on conference call, on Facebook, on Instagram, or YouTube. Lord, that we would not be deceived because the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work deceiving and being deceived. Oh God, infiltrating congregations, infiltrating organizations, infiltrating people, Lord. Oh God, with the intent to turn them away from you. But Lord, we know that you are the true and living God. God. And Lord, by the demonstration of your power, by the veracity of your word, we hold on to that knowledge that we know who you are. God, we're praying today, my God, for Dorothea. We're praying today for Romaine, for Carrie. We're praying for Marquita. We're praying for Donna Severus. We're praying, my God, for Evelyn Johnson and her children. We're praying for Nikki, for Serenity. We're praying for Caden and Carson. We're praying for the Bogues family, the Staten family, the Rogers family, the Gallup family, the Kathy family, the Spellman family, the Purvis family. We're praying for Kyren. We're praying for Demetrius and Kel. We're praying for L this morning. God, God, I'm praying for Sister Polk. I'm praying for Cinda, for Tyler. I'm praying for Beverly Bailey. I'm lifting up Bishop and Lady Davenport. I'm praying for Jean Long's grandchildren. I'm praying for our Asia Hutchinson. I'm praying for families everywhere. I'm praying for Marquita. I'm praying for Selena Johnson and family. I'm praying for Jasmine. My God, that's being attacked. Oh, Shana, even on her job, that you would deliver now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for Michael this morning. I'm praying for Dr. Haywood, Sister Haywood, and the family. I'm praying for Lene Gonzalez. I'm praying for Aliyah Collinger. I'm praying for Bishop and Mother Hall today. Everybody on the prayer list, everybody in the prayer book, everybody that's been sent by text or messenger, God, we're praying for them now. We're praying for deliverance, God. I'm praying for salvation for the unsaved. God, let them come in. Let them be saved before it's too late. Time, my God, is short. Time is shaking hands with eternity. And my God, we have to be ready. We have to be ready, Jesus. So help us, God, to be ready. Lord, condition the minds of the believers to stand fast in the truth of the word and not to stray and not to deviate, but to trust you, God, for your keeping power today. God, I'm praying for the sick right now. We lift up Apostle Ronald Carter. Lord, we're praying for him now. We're praying for the healing of his body. We're praying, oh God, that you would heal him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're praying for Roberta Jenkins, for Missionary Domingo, for Minister Jimmy Lee. We're praying for Sister Teresa Daniels, God, that you would undertake. We're praying for Kalan. We're praying for Lady Sue White. We're praying for Dreamy's mother. We're praying for Tessa and Drew, for Mother McCall. We're praying for Natalie Nash. We're praying for Sydney Rembert, oh God, Senior. We're praying for Doris Harvey. We're praying for Latasia Davis this morning. We're praying for Seymour and Doris Staten. We're praying for Aunt Ida. We're praying for Lamont Edwards. God, everybody that's sick everywhere. God, that you would stretch out your hand to heal. Lord, we're praying today for Bishop Alfonso Brooks, for Mother Shirley Clark, for Mother Evangeline Jenkins, for Lady Andrea Maxwell, for Apostle David Maxwell. We're praying, my God, for Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop Mac Vincent, Bishop Gregory Wilder, Apostle Leroy Joseph today. My God, stretch out your healing hand. Lord, remember Brother Wiggins. Remember Brother and Mother Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland today. Day. God, touch and heal now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're praying today, my God, for Dr. and Sister Hayward and Dr. Hayward's mother. We're praying for Mother Jill, Mother Pride. We're praying, my God, for Mother Chambers, Mother Carter, Mother Moorhead. We're praying for Lady Staten today. We're praying for Margie. Lord, let your healing virtue flow. We're praying for recovery today. My God, for Pastor Carr, for Minister Carr, for Elder Tyson, for Elder Smith, Lord. Lord, remember them now. We're praying right now that you remember Mother Foster, Henry J, Brother Cliff, Lord, touch and heal in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're praying today, my God, hallelujah, for Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Missionary Simmons, Lord, strengthen and heal in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God, I'm praying, oh, Shandala Basia Tanaye, for Cynthia, for Catherine, for Duchess, Lord, that you would strengthen their bodies, oh, God, and continue to heal them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, remember today, Marlette, remember Dennis, remember Maureen. 
increase today. Remember my God, everybody, everywhere. Remember my God, Tony. Remember Kimberly, God. Everybody that's sick in their body. Lord, render your healing strength to them now. Lord, walk into every hospital, into the rehab center, into the nursing home, into the ICU ward, the COVID ward, the cancer ward, the dialysis unit. My God, and bring healing. Anybody watching this morning that's sick in their body, Lord, demonstrate your power by touching them now, removing pain. Oh God, bringing down sugar, bringing down blood pressure. Oh my God, oh God, shrinking tumors, God, in the name of in the name of Jesus, let your mighty blood prevail. God, I pray for grieving people everywhere, everywhere people have been touched. Oh my God, by loss. I lift up Bishop Michael Fields this morning, Shekinah, and I lift up the Fields Green family. I lift up my God, Lady, hallelujah, Ida Harrell and the Harrell family. I lift up Mother Jacqueline Grant and the Grant family, the Hargrove family, God. Oh, hallelujah, remember them. Oh God, the Kramer family, the respective church families, and God, bring your healing virtue, oh God, to their broken hearts, their broken spirits. God, mend them, lift their faith today. God, we're praying today, hallelujah, for Cynthia Bazin. We're praying for the Shafna and small families. We're praying, oh God, for the Chance Moore family, for the Olive Branch family. We're praying today for Melissa Hart and the Evans family, for the Harris Mangrum family. We're praying, my God, for Mimi. We're praying for brother and sister Evans today. We're lifting up the Grimes family, the Staten family, the May family, the Highsmith family, the Robinsons, God. We're praying for Barbara Florence today. We're praying for Kalisha Robinson and the Beulah Church family, the Clemens family, God. We lift up the Groover family today and we pray for Greater Refuge Temple of Jacksonville and Lakeland. We pray for Region 10. We pray for Pastor Oliver and Solomon's Temple of Midway, Georgia. Every grieving person everywhere, God, remember them, the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family, the Moyers, the Meadows family, the Perkins family. We're praying today that you remember, my God, the Dockery family, the White family. Lord, everybody suffering grief, God. Remember Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. Remember Margie and the McLean, Melvin, and Street family. Remember, the, hallelujah, all the, the Ransom family. Remember Brenda. Hallelujah. And the Alan McNeely family. Remember Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family. God, we lift up. We lift up the Alan Williams family. Praying for Trell and Ryan. We lift up the Clark family. Praying for Tommy and Michelle. Lord, everybody that's grieving everywhere. God, hold them up in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdies, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family, the Winninghams, the Bankses, the Middletons, the Taylors. God, Lord, stretch out your hand and remember the Fields. Felix family, the Sapata family, the Mannix, the Boodrums, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherins, the Briggs family, God. Remember the Taylors, the Phillips family, the Josephs, every grieving family, God. Remember the Davises, oh God, the Allens, the Caldwells. Remember, my God, the Hayses, the Moors. Remember the Harbisons. Remember, my God, the Adams family. Remember the Austin family. Every grieving widow, widow word, child, parent, sibling, loved one. God, send the comfort of your spirit now in the name of Jesus. Christ. God, I'm praying today for the body of Christ. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, every pastor's child, every mother and missionary, minister and deacon. My God, I'm praying today for the young people. I'm praying today, my God, for musicians, singers, and psalmists, the entire body of Christ today. God, that you would remember us. Lord God, and don't let us be deceived. God, don't let us be taken in by the spirit of the Antichrist. Lord, keep Keep our minds, keep our hearts, keep our souls. Oh, Shanana Basia, hold us, oh Kataye, in the hollow of your hand and keep us now in the name of Jesus. God, I'm praying today for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. I'm praying today for school employees and students everywhere. I'm praying that as these numbers go up and down, that you would cover and protect everybody, oh God, in their jobs, whether they work in hospitals, nursing homes, rehab centers, clinics, banks, stores. God, cover and protect them. Lord God, cover and protect so many new viruses, new variants, God. But Lord, you're the God that protects and covers. So keep the uninfected uninfected, God, and heal the sick, Lord, everywhere. Heal the sick, God, everywhere. And Lord, in these last days, we need a healing anointing upon this land because this land is so troubled. This land is so sick. But God, we trust you, God, to bring healing now. Oh God, heal from 
from sin, heal from violence, heal from hatred, heal my God from injustice, from racism, from sexism, heal the land, Jesus, and let the church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. God, I pray we all will be ready to meet you because you're coming again. And God, we have to be ready. Take us, protect us, and cover us today. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody, everybody give God praise right now. Everybody bless him. Everybody honor him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Everybody give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is my declaration. Hallelujah. This is my declaration for today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, keep me. I can't afford to be deceived. Lord, keep me. I cannot afford to be deceived. My soul is at stake because if I follow the spirit of the Antichrist, if I yield to that spirit, saints, I'm going to be lost. If you yield to that spirit, you're going to be lost. We cannot afford to be deceived. We cannot afford our prayer every day or to be, Lord, keep my mind, keep my soul, keep my spirit, keep my, the Paul said, I pray that your whole body, soul, and spirit be preserved until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we cannot afford, saints, we cannot afford to be deceived. So my prayer every day is, Lord, keep me because I cannot afford to be deceived. God bless you this morning. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your day is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and I would love for you to share this because this is teaching that often is not shared. So share this teaching because people need to be warned of what is to come. So share it with somebody, all right, in Jesus' name. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of this available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. GregoryGospel.com. I want to invite everybody to join Refuge Temple and join me in consecration beginning today for the next 21 days. Every day we're reading out of St. Mark chapter number 9 verses 14 through 29 and the theme of this consecration is impossible possibilities. God is going to do the impossible in somebody's life. So join us. Join us in consecration. We're fasting every Wednesday and every Friday and I'll let the Holy Spirit lead you as to how long to fast but turn your plate down for part of the day on Wednesday and on Friday. On Saturday mornings, we're meeting for prayer at Refuge Temple and we're fasting until after prayer. Prayer begins at 10 o'clock. That means you fast until after prayer ends, which is sometime between about 11.15, 11.30. You can end your fast and go on with your day. But join us. Join us in this prayer and fasting and consecration. You who want loved ones saved, you who want to be strengthened spiritually, you who want to make a difference in the kingdom, join us in in this consecration in Jesus name. I want to thank everybody that sees and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do. And I want you to, to I want to thank you for it because I appreciate everything that you send. And if you want to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give online. Our website is www.refugetemple in is in North, C is in Carolina dot com. Refuge Temple NC dot com is our website. You can go to the donate page on the site and share your gift. If you have the Givelify app, you can give through Givelify. Just simply search for Refuge Temple Burlington and make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, Excuse me, our cash app is dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign one refuge is our cash app, and you can share your gift. And we thank you for your giving, but we thank you most of all 
for being a part of this prayer because people's lives are being touched, delivered, and blessed because we are praying. We are praying. So keep coming. Keep inviting others to come and please keep praying. And as you pray, pray for me. Pray for Lady Davis. Pray for our children. Pray for my father. Pray for my sisters. Pray for our nieces, our nephews, my in-laws. Pray for our entire family. Just hold us up before the Lord. Pray for Refuge Temple that God will continue to bless us and pray one for another that the grace of God would sustain us and that we will all be ready to meet Jesus Christ when he comes. The grace of God cover you. The Holy Spirit preserve and keep you. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. Shalom, shalom.